Hi, my name is Angelique Rodriguez. I'm the policy assistant here at CARE Washington. Um, for context, CARE Washington is a civil rights and advocacy organization serving Muslim individuals, families, and communities in Washington state. Um, so today I'm here with a few of our interns who have worked on a KYR campaign for religious accommodations. Um, and the purpose of this, uh, this video, this conversation, is basically we just want to highlight that you are entitled to um, religious accommodations. It is within your right. Um, and then we also just want to highlight like how to go about that in the workplace, in the uh, school spaces. Um, and yeah, so uh, our interns have done a ton of work on this. Um, we're going to plug some resources at the end, but um, there's resources on our Instagram and also our Know Your Rights uh, page. So without further ado, I'm just going to pass it over to our interns to introduce themselves. Uh, thank you, Angelique. Hi, my name is Anab Omar. I am currently a senior at UW and also one of the media interns here at CARE Washington. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Angelique. I'm Shanze Shabi. I'm also a senior at UW and I'm a policy intern at CARE Washington. So thank you both. Uh, we're going to go straight into the questions. So my first question is for Anab. Uh, can you give us a quick overview of what religious accommodations are? Yes. Um, so religious accommodations refer to the legal rights and practices that allow individuals to practice their religion without facing discrimination or any hardship in different aspects of life, um, including school or work. Um, some areas religious accommodation might cover include right to religion, religious attire, um, right to observe a holiday, antique absence, time for prayer, expression, um, dietary restrictions, or curriculum and education. Thank you so much, Anab. Um, so the second question is, why does this matter? Um, and I'll give this to Shanze. Yeah, I think religious accommodations are just an essential component of um, the right to religious freedom. I think people should have the right to practice their faith without facing any discrimination or obstacles in various aspects of their lives. Um, and this can include employment, education, or public services. So I think, you know, religious accommodations being embedded within, um, you know, legal writing within law um, and policy is for those obstacles and um, chances of discrimination to essentially be diminished for people. Thank you. Um... One follow-up question that I have is, do you have any stories or examples of times that uh, religious accommodations were needed? Yeah, so I think um, just in my personal experience as a Muslim college student, religious accommodations have just been really necessary when it comes to creating a comfortable and inclusive educational environment, um, one that balances the practice of my faith and my studies. One example of this is during Ramadan, for example, um, I request my professors to either record my lectures or post the slides on um, Canvas just in case I'm not able to attend class because I'm, you know, tired from um, like waking up really early for suhoor or whatever it may be. Um, so I think that has really helped me in being able to maintain like my grades and um, just doing good in my classes um, without compromising my faith. For sure, for sure. Thank you, thank you. Um, that kind of leads to our next question, which is what do religious accommodations look like in the workplace in Washington? Um, and I'll give a nod mm -hmm. um, So religious accommodation in the workplace might be, uh, are like any adjustments to the work environment that will allow an employee or applicant to practice his or her religion. Um, the need for religious accommodation may arise when an individual's religious beliefs, observances, and practice conflict with a specific task or like a requirement for the job or applying for the job. Mm -hmm. One follow-up question I have is, can you explain what rights workers have and how to request accommodations? Yes, so religious accommodation in the workplace might look like exemption from a work rule or grooming standard. Um, exemptions could include, for example, wearing a particular headscarf or religious dress, such as a Jewish yarmulke or a Muslim headscarf, or wearing certain hairstyles and facial hair. 
Um, this also includes an employee's observance of a religion um, prohibition against certain clothing, like miniskirts or pants. Um, religious accommodation in the workplace could also look like uh, wanting changes to a work schedule or accommodating attendance at workship or services to eliminate safety issue. Um, these things include things like transfer to another person, like giving the task to someone else um, or changing shifts, which is the same thing, voluntary um, shift substitutions and modifications to workplace policies or practices. Um, however, an employer does not have to reasonably accommodate if the accommodation they're asking for has an undue hardship. Um, and that means like if the accommodation has a safety compromise um, or a cost that neg negatively impacts other employees or would create like a violation of collective bargaining agreement. Um, now, how to request, um, in order to receive an accommodation from an employer, the employee must hold the religious belief and put in a notice. And then um, after the notice, the employee and the employer must enter into an interactive process to find like a reasonable accommodation. So that's how you would request one. Just give a notice and then find a reasonable way to accommodate to that religious accommodation. Okay, thank you. Um, so shifting a little bit back to education, um, this is a question for both of you. Um, the question is, what do religious accommodations look like in K through 12 education in Washington specifically? Yeah, so I can answer the first portion. Um, this can look like a lot of things. Um, one of them is excusing absence for um you know, religious activities and observances, so just religious holidays in general, um, and then also um, providing like alternate assignments um, with similar learning goals so students don't miss out on um, like the quality of education that they're receiving. Um, and then also, um, Anab mentioned this earlier for uh, workplace accommodations, but just waiving dress codes or school uniforms that interfere with a student's religious beliefs. Uh, so this can involve waiving a rule uh, to allow a student to wear a head covering um, or, you know, if a school uniform requires like mini skirts or something like that, just waiving that for the student. Um, and then, yeah, religious holidays, just, that's one of the main ones, just allowing students um, to honor those religious practices. Um, but yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, and then a follow up question is like, can you explain what rights students and families have and how to request accommodations? Um, Shonze, you kind of went over it. Um, you touched on it, but maybe the re request accommodations part for Anab, if you could go into that. I can, yeah, I can answer how to request for an accommodation. Requests should be submitted in advance to allow school to make appropriate arrangements and scheduling adjustments. And if the request for an excused absence for a religious event that request must be made in accordance with the school's attendance procedure. Um, and so the accommodation request must include the specific accommodation requested that you're asking for, um, why the accommodation is needed, the amount of time, duration, and frequency that you might need that accommodation for. So. Thank you, thank you. Um, and then one other question we have, still on the, still going with education. Um, is particularly because you both are students at UW, um, what do religious accommodations look like in colleges and universities in Washington? Um, can you explain what rights students have and how to request accommodations? And I'll give this to Shanze. Yeah, so um, colleges and universities in Washington are required to develop policies to accommodate student absences, um, you know, for the purpose of one's religious beliefs. It also requires faculty to reasonably accommodate um, student observation of religious beliefs holidays, which includes rescheduling exams um, or activities or offering different times um, for those exams or uh, class activities to again, make sure that the students' grades are not impacted. Um, and then universities and colleges in Washington are also required to provide notice to students of their religious um, accommodation policy by either by both publishing the policy on their website and also including um, the policy itself or a link to it in the course or program syllabi. Um, that way, making sure that it's as visible to students as possible. 
Um, and then any student that is seeking to request religious accommodations um, in a college or university in Washington must provide a written notice to faculty within the first two weeks of beginning the course. Um, and then the religious accommodations typically uh, include the specific dates that you're requesting accommodations for um, in terms of, you know, the exams you want to reschedule or the activities that you want to reschedule. And then it's also important to make sure you're referring back to your specific school's religious accommodation policies and making sure that um, the request that you're submitting is in line with the procedure that they already have. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, my last question for you both is, is there anything else you think people should know about their rights to religious accommodations? Yeah, I think one thing to keep in mind, just based on my own personal experience, it's always better to be proactive about requesting your accommodations, making sure you're um, doing them in advance. If you're requesting them from your school, for example, just make sure you know what the procedure looks like well in advance of the actual date that you'll be requesting accommodations for, because um, oftentimes uh, students' needs aren't fulfilled in that area because they wait too long or they aren't sure what the procedure looks like. Um, so yeah, just make sure you're uh, getting that information ahead of time. Thank you so much. Um, that, those were the end of our questions. And to close out, I just want to thank our interns for all the work that they've put in. Um, they have done worked on an infographic and added um, more information on your rights, particularly in uh in regard to religious accommodations. So if you have more questions, be sure to go to our Instagram, Care Washington, because we have an infographic there. And then be sure to check out our Know Your Rights, uh, knowyourrightswa.com. Um, we are constantly trying to update information there. And this can um, show you kind of some of not just religious accommodations, but um, in immigration and in all sorts of other um, areas as to what rights are or what what your rights are um, so thank you both for all your work and with that I will close this out thank you thank you